Hi, my name is Edmund Chen and I'm a solutions architect uh, based out of Toronto. And the reason for my uh, recording today is to share a use case from a customer who was asking about running manual tests as part of their pipeline process. What they wanted to see is the ability to, uh, after a build stage is completed, assign a piece of work to an individual to perform, to perform the manual tests. And only once that's been completed, uh, be able to resume the pipeline. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'll share my screen so that you can, you can walk you through the uh, demonstration I built. And what you'll see here is an issue board and you can see that there are no issues that are currently open. And uh, I'll go and update the uh, pipeline YAML that I've created for this purpose. And uh, I'll just make a simple change. I have a bunch of debugging statements here that I no longer need. So I'll delete uh, one of these here and I'll commit my change. And, uh, and what I want to draw your attention to now is if I go look at the pipeline, you can see the pipeline consists of build, test, and deploy stage. And let's take a look at the running pipeline. You'll see that the build stage is completed. And uh, now the test stage is waiting for manual um, a manual step for, to move on and uh, execute that job. Now, if I go back to my board and I refresh the screen, you should be able to see that a pipeline um, task, uh, a new issue has been created. And in that issue, I have the actual pipeline number 12218 uh, included in that title so that it's easy to associate the issue with the uh, pipeline uh, job that is uh, waiting for manual action. If I go ahead and try and execute this now, we'll see that, uh, well, can you even open it up and see what's going on? Well, you'll see that this has failed and it's failed because the manual test task has not been marked complete yet. So this is where I'm going to ask the, uh, essentially looking for the tester, whoever's been assigned this task, in this case I've assigned it to myself, uh, they would need to open up the issue see that there's a task uh, that's listed here, they can go ahead and mark that task complete. And now if I go back to my pipeline and rerun this job, uh, let's move my video out of the way and retry. We should see this jump job run successfully. And you can see at the bottom job succeeded. So now, if I go back to my actual pipeline view, we can see that the entire pipeline has completed. We've got green check marks all the way across. What this has also done, if I uh, go back to my issue board, pipeline 12218 tasks, this issue should also have been moved out of open and into a closed state. And that's uh, essentially the uh, the capability demonstration portion for uh, uh, of, uh, uh, for the customer. The um, uh, in terms of how I achieve this, uh, let's go over this really. Um, I guess briefly for everyone, I am using um, manual pipeline gate, as you noticed earlier uh, from the pipeline view, uh, API calls, environment variables, and we can see that um, here in the environment with the variables. I've got my issue ID key that I've defined and we'll see why in a moment. And of course I've got my token uh, that I'm passing in order to uh, gain access to create and uh, query the issues. If I go to my CI, uh, GitLab CI YAML, we can see here uh, some of the script thing that was done. Um, for example, I have in my URL here, I am including in my title uh, of the issue that I'm creating the CI pipeline ID. Uh, so that's how I'm uh, capturing that information. And further down, uh, as I post, uh, as I create the issue, I'm also capturing the issue ID. And this issue ID is what I'm using to afterwards look up the status of the tasks, whether they've been completed or not. Uh, but issue ID as a variable is not something I can pass between 
uh, job stages if uh, I'm defining it directly in the script. So that's why I had to create it in the CI CD uh, environment uh, variables list. And that's where I created the uh, issue ID variable and I'm assigning it here uh, with a curl uh, request, the IID issue ID that I'm capturing from the creation of the issue uh, and placing it into that value so that it can be read uh, subsequently from the next date uh, here where you can see I'm echoing that just to make sure that it's there. And uh, I can then uh, use that to capture the, uh, the task counts and the task complete counts from the issue that was created. So this information then is used for comparison. It's just a simple if uh, statement, if else. So if those, if the task count and task complete counts uh, match, then the test task was marked complete. That's the message I've echoed. And essentially you can change that message to whatever you want just to verify that all the tasks have been completed. And then you would exit with a uh, return code of zero, which would be success. Or if those do not match, then I'm exiting with a, uh, uh, return code of one, which would indicate a uh, job failure. Uh, one final view here of the actual output from each of these stages. Uh, you can see uh, the echo IID, that's issue ID 45. If I go back to my board, you can see that that was the issue number there, 45. And um, coming back to the test stage, can see that issue ID has been passed along as I mentioned, and that's what I'm using to go ahead and uh, query for the task complete count and task count and comparing those two values. And uh, that's it for today. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks very much.